I've always had an interest in plants and broke ground on my first vegetable garden aged 11. It was incredibly exciting, but my goodness was there a lot to learn. I made a lot of mistakes, attempting to dig with a hand fork for example. So here are my top 10 keys to success for a really productive garden. Some might say it's far from sexy, but I reckon rich, healthy soil has most definitely got it going on. Soil is the starting point for everything we do and the basis for a healthy garden. Mm. This here is a beautiful jar of homemade kimchi. I'm really rather pleased with it. It tastes great, but more importantly, it's absolutely loaded with beneficial bacteria. When I consume this, it's gonna really help my gut biome, creating a healthier environment in there and a happier me. And it's exactly the same with our soil. Look after it and it will look after your plants. And the best way to do that is to top it up regularly with lovely organic matter. Well-rotted manure, garden compost, leaf mould, these can all be added to naturally feed your soil and the life within it while improving its structure and performance. I like to add organic matter at least once a year, usually in the winter, to build soil health for the coming growing season. But really it can be added at any time of the year, whenever beds are empty or even added around existing crops. Starting a new garden or even a new growing season is, let's be honest, absolutely thrilling. It's an incredibly exciting time, but it's this that can lead to a scattergun approach. And that can cause issues such as sowing at the wrong time, overcrowding or choosing the wrong crop for your climate or soil. So it's better to take a little bit of time now to work out what you'll be growing. It might seem obvious, but it's worth growing what you like to eat, plus either what costs more money to buy in the shops, or what might give the biggest yield for the space you have. Think of it like writing a shopping list before you go food shopping. And take your time on deciding what variety of each crop to grow. If you're starting out, it's worth looking for pest or disease resistant crops, like these tomatoes here. These guys are resistant to blight, or, for example, these spinach seedlings. This variety here is slow to bolt, which means it won't flower as quickly, which means I can pick more of those lovely leaves before I need to pull up the plant. Enjoy pouring over the seed catalogues. Take your time to ponder and dream. It's one of the most satisfying moments of the gardening year. Once you know what you want to grow, you'll then need to work out when to sow or plant it and when you can expect to harvest it. The best gardens have something going in every month to keep the harvests coming. Many crops are quick growers or will be out of the ground by midsummer, like these early onions for example. Now am I going to leave the soil then bare until spring? Not on your nelly! I will have something else waiting, ready to go in after them, like for example winter cabbages or a final sowing of say main crop carrots. Taking the time to plan what goes in when like this can make the most of the ground you have. I love using the garden planner for this sort of thing. You can set when crops are in the ground, then view your plan month by month to see when and where gaps appear. The best thing is that the plant list, which automatically updates as crops are added, will show you when to sow, plant and harvest, making planning your next crop super easy. If you want to make the most from your garden, then taking the time to research what will be in the ground when can really help. Don't forget that you can grow upwards too, cramming even more into the space that you've got. As a gardener, you quickly realise that you need even more space and it doesn't matter how big your garden is. But by growing upwards, we can squeeze even more in. These are my bean arches, which transform from their naked form at this time of year to fully cloaked, dangling with beany goodness in just a few months' time. You don't need to spend loads on arches or supports either. You can make them from natural materials such as branches, and I reckon they look really beautiful like this anyway. 
Many supports can be sourced for free or even grown yourself, like these lovely upright hazel stems here. These would be perfect for bean poles. Or you could grow your own bamboo canes, like these for example. Make use of walls too. Attach pots and tubs to vertical surfaces to create a real wow factor. Or how about stepping up pots on a simple stepladder type arrangement? If you're starting out, don't fret about purchasing ready to go plug plants or young plants like these. I will let you into a little secret. I buy them all the time. It saves valuable time and space and it avoids those early precarious stages of growth. So why not give yourself the same advantage? It can make good sense to grow warm season crops like tomatoes and peppers from young plants, for example. It means you can grow lots of different varieties without having to sow little pinches of seeds from many different packets. Hubbing young plants in an instant also gets you that much closer to harvest time too, of course. Check plants are strong and healthy before you buy them and prioritise higher value veggies. I've seen carrots, individual ones, sold in plugs, which when you do the sums is just insanely expensive. When I started, I would sow absolutely everything directly into the soil where it's to grow. Now there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And in fact, it's the best way of starting off root crops like carrots or say parsnips. But there's also a very good reason why it's sometimes worth sowing into plugs or pots and then transplanting at a later date. Germination is often more reliable in a controlled environment away from slugs and other pests, whether that be a greenhouse, a cold frame, or even just indoors on your windowsill. By sowing into plug trays or pots like this, I can plant out my plants at exactly the right spacing using really sturdy, healthy little seedlings. It also means I can start something off while there's no room outside so that these can be growing on and once the earlier crop is finished, they'll be ready to go out. And it means I can enjoy an earlier start to the growing season by starting them off in the warm. Now then, I would strongly recommend that you get yourselves some really solid, sturdy trays like these. These will last for absolute decades. As gardeners, we need the three Ps by the shovel load. Patience, positivity and pragmatism. You see, little knocks and setbacks aren't just likely to happen, they're almost certain to. Weeds will always be there. You can never hope to eradicate them, but slow and steady weeding will help to keep you on the forward foot. A few minutes of weeding by hand or hoe every week should help to keep you on top of those weeds. And bear in mind that many weeds are really valuable for wildlife, so don't sweat it if it's a bit weedy towards the edge of your plot. That's my excuse anyway. In the same vein, pests are part and parcel of gardening life. Slugs, aphids, leaf miners, pigeons, they're all out there waiting for you to head indoors and turn your back so they can get onto your crops. But don't try and annihilate them. Instead, just put into place sensible precautions like slug traps and netting to keep them off. And bear in mind that many pests are a valuable food source for the sorts of beneficial bugs and birds that we do want in our gardens. And never ever use artificial pesticides or weed killers, it's just not cool. There will be setbacks, there'll be downright failures too, but embrace each failure as an opportunity to learn for next time, like these massacred brassicas. The lesson learned, put covers on properly much earlier. If there's one piece of growing season advice that's incredibly low tech but stunningly effective, it's to mulch. Mulching is when you lay down materials over the soil surface to cover it. And the best mulches are natural and organic. My favorite mulch is grass clippings, which can be scattered around crops here and there throughout the growing season. And if you'd like a video on that, well, I'll pop a link to it down below. In nature, soil doesn't stay bare for long. And in the absence of 
permanent ground cover, mulching can do a lot to keep the soil happy. It will shade it from the hot sun so that soil moisture stays in there for longer. It will help to give weeds a really tough time pushing through. And as it decomposes, it will help to build your soil's fertility and structure. Mulching can dramatically cut down on your workload for all the above reasons. Straw, compost, wood chips, leaves, all of these will help. And my suggestion is to use whatever you can produce in your own garden or find locally. And on that note, bear in mind that gardening needn't cost loads if you don't want it to. For many of us, the whole point of growing our own is to save a little bit of money. You can often find seeds very cheaply or for free at local seed swaps. You can repurpose lots of old containers like yogurt pots or mushroom trays and so on as cheap containers. And if you're willing to put in the effort, you can find organic matter to nourish your soil for free if you're willing to go and collect it. Many things in gardening that cost a bit have an alternative that's either free or at least very cheap. Here are some ideas to get your creative juices flowing. Experiment, try new things, push the boundaries. This is good life advice generally, but when it comes to gardening, it's what helps to keep things fresh. You never know, you might discover a new vegetable that you love, or perhaps a new growing method that transforms the way you do things. Honestly, as a gardener, the more I learn, the more I realise there's still so much more to learn, and I love that. If you're looking to start a completely new garden, then check out this video next, where I discuss practicalities such as sunlight, shelter and water collection. All the vital stuff. In the meantime, comment below on what you're hoping to grow this season. I'll catch you next time.